Which watch is the ultimate Bond watch? Last Bond standing. Last Bond standing! Yes! yes. <laughs> I hate anything that has the Bond logo on it. They found this actual watch in a flea market. The best Bond watch has to be the one that had the coolest shit in it. I didn't want to have just the watch on the wrist. I wanted also to have the picture of the actor with the watch on the wrist. Hello, I'm George. I'm Adrian. And I'm Andrew. And it's about time we talked about James Bond watches. I want to do a showdown between the three of us yeah. on which watch is the ultimate Bond watch. Last Bond standing. Last Bond standing, yes! yes. <laughs> okay, but before we do that, before the, we do that, we have to do a wrist check. We have to do a wrist check. What is on your wrist? Okay, today I am wearing the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak 15500 in... <laughs> this, way, this way, this way, Which is a fancy word for grey. <laughs> fancy you, or... Sorry, sorry. Say it's it ruthenium, come on. Come on you say Get a fancy word speak. for grey, but it's grey. <laughs> it is. It's, it's, it's like a grey suit, into it. but it's grey. <laughs> it's a grey Royal Oak. Yes, okay. who, who, is, who is Ruth? <laughs> um, I am wearing my trusty Explorer 2. Not Ooh. so hypey. What's the fancy word for white? I don't know, but I, I, I <laughs> like the white and orange. Stardust white. And, and <laughs> it's a cool, a cool combo. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's a cool watch. You know, George, it, it's that, solid. that wasn't a hypey watch until I saw that there was a some YouTube guy went into an ice cave with it. Oh, he's, he, he's a cool dude. Who, he's who got was some he? Great, I, I, just, I, 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 what's a YouTube channel? I don't, I, I don't even acknowledge YouTubers. Yeah, <laughs> they're not <laughs> legitimate. <laughs> These old guys, eh? Oh, <laughs> oh it's a... Oh, oh, it's about oh, f***ing time we just got that out of our system. Oh, that's my. episode two. <laughs> it's uh, it's good about last 21st week. century. <laughs> George, what are you wearing? <laughs> oh, what am I wearing? Okay, I've got, I've got to take that one off. Uh, what on, am I boy. wearing? I am wearing the um, Tag Heuer Bamford Edition Aqua Racer Ultimate Tool Watch. For me, this is kind of like... If I saw Bond today, I'd probably... This is kind of a Bond watch. Mm, Adrian, do you feel like he's primping us for a, a battle later? I think this watch I, I, might come into play. Uh, Has to come into play. Come on! Uh, it's I've a tool watch. To say. I've got things to say. <laughs> okay. Whoa. Okay, so... A word from our sponsor. You can see it behind me. We are so lucky to have Pillar. Oh, fucking <laughs> bollocks. <laughs> Four Pillars, Ultimate Gin. We are so lucky to have them as our sponsor. Um, and I think we're going to we're gonna do, as we did last time, a drink break, um, as we did last time. And for me, I have chosen, because I think it's so cool, is the Spiced Negroni Gin from Four Pillars. Four Pillars is such a great brand, and thank you so much for sponsoring us. Yes, and look, we couldn't do the martini. But we, we went as close as we could with the, the Spice Negroni gin. Oh, yes. And uh, I think the Negroni kind of works for this. Um, so, okay, now getting into it. Adrian, what watch is your kind of battle royale watch that you're going to bring on the James Bond kind of subject? So I, I feel bad going so early on this because I, I kind of feel like... You're just ending it. That's what you're Yeah, saying. yeah. You, you, you're starting with the ends. Um, so I'd, I'll go with... <laughs> Tough talk. <laughs> Ooh, okay. <laughs> we've, we've got two choices, right? Yeah. So I'm going to put one in as like my... Um, what Don't do you call you it? dare steal my choices. No, you, you said I can go first, so... Uh, I'm going to go with the No Time to Die. Seamaster. For... And, and I'm going to have to get this little rant off uh, straight off the bat. Pretty much... All the Bond watches before this, the released Bond watches, right, have been nothing more than cheap, tacky Bond merchandise. I hate Ooh. anything that has the Bond logo on it <laughs> as part of the design. So there's been Seamasters with uh, counterweights on the second hand. That is a 007. Yeah. This, that's, yeah. No, a spy's not going to wear that. And it's just yeah, it's not too <laughs> well, you're, it? you're right. It's kind of signified. Yeah, hey, right. I'm a, you may I'm as well a, write yeah. MI5. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you're, you're kind of sitting and having a four pillars gin, and and, and you, you're kind of reaching, and it says 007. It's like yeah, okay. I, I, you're I, the I, spy around it. It's a good point. I can't stand that. But this watch was 
legitimately stunning design. Um, it was, it made sense being a Seamaster. It was a nice transition from being slightly different from the normal Seamasters, not quite as conservative, uh, but it is something that a tactical person would wear. It made and, sense. And if we can talk about the ways that it actually played a part in the movie, it continues that very big shift that happened with Pierce Brosnan and Omega taking over as the official Bond watch. And that was, and we'll get to this a little bit later as a phone a friend moment, but because we've spoken to the man that arranged this, but it, it was written into the script. Look, the No Time to Die Seamaster it was such a great idea, the NATO strap, the whole whole marketing around it felt very much back to the roots, back to Bond, back to kind of simplification. And that case, the dial, the combination, it was a watch you wanted, not yeah. this is a gimmick. But also it, it kind of tied in with the slight transition of Bond as, as, as a product because Bond became a bit less cheesy yeah it became uh perhaps more realistic mm. as cinema can get realistic but it, it, it kind of if you think of previous bonds there was a very cheesy element yeah. to it a very unrealistic element of these these very fancy gadgets which were impossible to create whereas this was a transition to this guy just does cool shit this is a cool watch yeah and i kind of feel that they, they go hand in hand those two so so that's my first pick is uh, the no time to die um, I, I, th I think I think it's you've gone out of the gates quite quite so that, punchy. That's, that's, thanks for watching, guys. That's, that's the that's end of the episode. Start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's your second? Are we going to do first and then second? Yeah, yeah. So, okay. so okay, Andrew. For me, the transition to Omega and the first Omega with Pierce Brosnan, and and just the absolute cavalcade of of Q gimmicks that was crammed into the watches from that point means the best Bond watch has to be the one that had the coolest shit in it. But my favorite ever Bond watch is from For Your Eyes Only. And it was a Seiko and a Digi watch. Oh, now, okay, Seiko. <laughs> I, I, I love the idea of, of Seiko because for me, Seiko actually had, there was the three pillars of James Bond watches and Seiko is that second or the third pillar in, in that watch. And they had a long stint. Oh, yeah, they did. Okay, so explain yeah. the watch because this, okay. is, this is kind of a, it's a weird choice. It is. You know, going Omega, going going. Am I Seiko. on George's Oddball podcast? No, the reason I've chosen <laughs> this is because... This is a reminder that after Rolex opens the account with Bond, and then we yeah. have a couple of odd ones in there. We have Hamilton, we have Breitling, we have others. We suddenly have this long era of Seiko, and we look back on this and say, why did he go low? But Seiko at that time, this was the peak of courts. And the Bond filmmakers kind of, and the Bond, whoever was organizing these props, backed Seiko to be the future of watchmaking because this was in that quartz era right. when suddenly it was like, oh, we've got to transition to the future of watches. The tra they transitioned to a watch, the Seiko reference H357, which was called a duo display. Now what this watch had, this was basically the first Apple watch. Okay. It had voice recognition as in- he Yes, could, he I know, I remember that. Yeah. He, he could speak to his team into this little speaker and it also had um, text on the screen. So you had sort of this bridging watch between yeah. Analog watches, mechanical watches. You had a digital display that had text on it. So I just think in so many ways, this, this kind of had Siri because you could talk to <laughs> <laughs> It had Siri. It had texts, you know, and yeah. this is, uh, this is, in a, uh, this is decades before the Apple Watch. Um, I just think it's a really cool watch. No, I, look, I, I, <laughs> it is memorable. And I remember watching the movie and I think he, when that ticker tape came out, he was, there was a lady that he was rolling over or something and then it happened on his <laughs> wrist. And, I, and it's just one of those things where you, you memorize that watch. Yeah. Um, look, I, I, I'm just going to drop something on you. You mentioned it already. I'm bringing the Breitling Top Timer. And the reason why I'm bringing the Breitling Top Timer is because no one talks about Bond and Breitling. Breitling. No, and no one knows. I, and and that's Breitling. what I love is mm. this was from Thunderball, the watch, you can see it visually on Thunderball and he used it as a Geiger counter. And that is the coolest thing. And for me, there's just something about this is the case, the design, the whole thing and the story behind it that it turned up in a flea market. Now I love flea market finds. 
and someone brought it for £25. Now, in Australian... £25, pounds, not 25 25 pounds 25 pounds in a flea market they found this actual watch in a flea market and then now this is the <laughs> this is this for me is the coolest thing is then they sold it at auction a few few months later for a hundred thousand pounds <laughs> i'm like this is the ultimate flea it's market the ultimate find. That's and dream. but yeah. the thing is this is a bond watch that case was nuts it was a big case because it had to fit the geiger counter in. and i love this from thunderbolt it was just it was a very cool bond in Thunderball because the villain was more geeky than the actual than Bond you know there was yeah. there was that boat that separated apart and there was all these kind of things and it was the first time that you saw a villain with with sharks in his pool and I was just like Are you want <laughs> the second sharks? time was, was Austin Powers yeah, and they had but laser want, beams with laser beams heads. but you want <laughs> sharks in a pool so that for me was my my kind of um, ultimate you know Bond watch I so, mean, it's hard to have. Is there a voting mechanism? I don't know how we can settle this this no, first round. No, no, well, no, no. We're, we're still going at it. But what okay. I'm what I'm going to do is, why don't we stop for a drink right now? Okay, sure. We, we we've got a great sponsor, Four Pillars. We've got the Spice Negroni Gin that is just for me ultimate. Thank you. And very we're much. just having a little sip we're ourselves. A little sip. And do you want to explain what happens in the drinks break? <laughs> well, we have got a very, very good sponsor in Four Pillars, but he is also a watch aficionado. He is. And so he has written us some of the toughest about effing time <laughs> questions. <laughs> and if you see that he has got some of the some of the toughest questions, he's written us 10 hard, hard they questions. Are. But his name is Matt. He's a co-founder of Four Pillars, but he sent me 10 questions. He said, I'll sponsor you guys. I'll back you in. But I want to ask you some tough questions. So I'm going to go through my list. Chin, chin. chin. Okay, chin, chin. Uh, Whoa. Oh, that's good. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. The spice is coming later. I'm getting getting very subtle Christmassy notes coming through. Mm, Spice. Yeah. Andrew, do you want to tell us the, the question? Sure. So as we sip and drink our spice Negroni gin, I'm going to ask an extremely difficult question to you guys. Oh, my God. And it goes as such. And I'm reading straight off my WhatsApp messages. This is totally authentic. Which iconic Grail watch is completely overrated? Rail watches. Grail. 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 You're about to say ball. No, I, I was about, I was actually about to go say an Omega Ranchero because I just thought it was the kind of funniest thing. As he... Andrew spits into the mic. <laughs> yeah. And then spits at George. This smells great. <laughs> okay. But I'd, I'd love to go in on this. Go on. Okay. Um, the, you, the, the, you, you, you go first. The, the Nautilus. Patek Philippe Nautilus. Oh. I can't stand how much love this watch gets. It's, it, it's clearly a good looking watch. But one, the value is completely unnecessary. And two, I think the amount of love it gets is it, it's uncalled for. <laughs> there are so many better, technically better uncalled watches out, for. For, out there uh, and technically better looking watches as well. Do you know what, um, do you know what it's about? It's about f- time Somebody someone said, said that. that the Nautilus <laughs> I agree. is completely overrated, overvalued what? and overloved. <laughs> but this this uh, Four Pillars is great. Yeah, on the other hand, no, can I tell you the one comment that ruined my love for the Nautilus? Because I wanted one because it's created really close to my birthday, which was, you know, 1995. It's a long time um, ago, man. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> but it wasn't <laughs> my birthday. Um, and that is they said the, the ears of the case – and since then, I've never been able to stop seeing these fucking ugly ears. Like elephant they ears sticking out. They're elephant ears. Okay. They ruined it for me. Look, I think at some point we've got to do a podcast on this. Because <laughs> for me, Good. I would go to you and say... What's your most overrated? Like, uh, no, but I would go an IWC um, engineer, uh, engineer, the original design, Gerald Genta, I think for me is better than a Nautilus. 100%. And, you know, 100%. so for me, I would go that over a Nautilus. Yes. Anyway, go on. But you, you're most overrated. You haven't said. No, no, because I'm going to wait for you because I'm, I, I'm going to, I, I, because I know what you're going to be talking about. So that's why I'm okay. like, right. I want to rip into that. Okay. No, the truth about, uh, the truth is I was, I was actually going to change up and say the Nautilus because I used to love it. And then after the ears comment, I had it the the most overrated for me is 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 a simple daytona i just have never yep. liked them i yep. found them too slight i found them too effeminate uh i've just never liked them but i think the only one i do like is the most hyped i, I think the ceramic bezel beefs it up a lot i think it looks better with a ceramic bezel but the, the original daytonas you mm, you feel like it's a yawn fest it's a yawn fest but it's also such a slight little dainty watch i just mm-hmm. don't like the look of them yeah unpopular watch opinion george 
Oh, I, I, still, I can feel him sweating. I am really. <laughs> this is great. This is this. Is, Andrew, this you is, go because I got. I'm, re, I'm refreshed while George is in pain. No, <laughs> okay, no okay. I I don't understand, but I I kind of do. Is it's a Grail watch, but not in my sense of a Grail watch. Is the Cartier crash. That is interesting. And the reason is because it should suit me down. What I mean is suit me in that kind of wonderfulness of like, this is. But I, I just, thought that would be right on it, you. It, it is, but I don't like, I, 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 there's color combinations. There's there's one or two that I've seen. Eric Koo's just put his up there. Mm -hmm. And I think Way's um, cat crash, I think, look beautiful. But, yeah. but the normal standard crash, I don't, I just, just don't understand. I, I really just, I, I don't know. I, it's It's one I of agree. those things. All right. Well, I, I think it's we need to talk about this. This is <laughs> this should this, be a, this is deep. We, we're either going to get cancelled or we've got good things to say. So let's talk about this. Adrian, uh, I get that tone from my school principal <laughs> when they call and say we need to talk about uh, Neve and Isla and Indy. Well, it's never I, good. This I think I think a lot of people are talking about that on so your school. Uh, <laughs> uh, look, it's, it, let's get back to the watches, James Bond watches. You've already brought what you think are kind of like the mic drop moments. Mm. Um, now let's go back to your second choice. So mm -hmm. this is the thing is, it is a battle royale and we brought it. Andrew, over to you. Okay, well, I got thrashed in the first round. I brought the quirkiest, weirdest sort of Apple Watch um, predecessor. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to just gonna drop the hammer here. <laughs> and that is uh, the Brosnan era for Amiga and Bond. Now, not only was this a massive upgrade in the watch's role in the movie. It was also, for me, when the Bond watch became something as iconic as the character. Now, I'm, I've cheated a little bit, guys. I've got to admit this, because we have a part of the show that we're introducing this week called Phone a Friend. Oh. And I wanted to phone my most famous friend because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I know there's a quote here. So, And by phone a friend, we mean a, a quote from someone in the watch industry that really adds to this discussion. And we interviewed Jean-Claude Biver and- Fuck you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and no, no, it's very, very relevant. And he, unbeknownst to many, he was once the head of Amiga. Everyone thinks of him as the Hublot guy. I don't know, what do you think of him as, Adrian? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd say Hublot, yeah? Yeah. Of your mates, yeah. Okay. Uh, George, what do you think of when you first think of uh, Jean-Claude? God watches. Okay. <laughs> There's actually a framed picture of you and him for the next yes, room. There, there is. is. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to plug this and we're going to do something very technological here. Is it true you paid more than the asking price for Omega to be the official watch of the James Bond franchise? Yes, I, because I paid also more because I wanted more things. I didn't want to have just the watch on the wrist. I wanted also to have the picture of the actor with the watch on the wrist. I wanted to do some ads. I wanted to do promotions. Uh, I want, so all this was additional uh, elements that in the beginning, it was just the price to have the watch on the wrist of James Bond. And I said, I don't want the watch on the wrist only. I want a full 360 degree uh, agreement. And I will give you much more money. I will give you uh, one or two million instead of your fifty wow. or sixty thousand dollars. Wow, that's isn't that just insane. So it turns out that Jean Claude Biver saved Omega. Well, I mean would, would Omega exist if if they didn't have that James Bond maybe that three sixty connection to be able to say that whole marketing campaign is not just on the wrist. It's not just And he, what he didn't mention is that integration into the script was part of that price. Jeez. So 50 grand for it to be in the movie somewhere, incidentally. Yeah. Two million to be written into the script on the movie poster, on the actor, worn by the actor in promo. I mean, I'm, I'm getting oh, I got goosebumps. Oh, hello, 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 hello. at me in yeah. shock. No, no, but also, uh, I mean, I, I, it, it's Jean Claude Beaver. I'm like, come on. It's <laughs> yeah, like, know. you know, and that's the thing is, this is such a great interview because what you're getting is that information that really. Omega and all of those brands would not like to be actually really out there. This sure. negotiation yeah. behind the closed doors. And that's what we've got from, you know, what we're doing here is this behind closed doors. Okay, Adrian, over to you. So um, that, I'll, I'll be short with this. Um, how cool <laughs> does Bond look in this shot? 
That's what a spy looks like. Someone just chilled. He looks decent. Nothing stands out. And that's exactly what a spy looks like. And what he has on the wrist is an aqua terror. Interesting. Interesting <laughs> indeed. And this is why this is like a the aqua stealth. terror this is, is like a stealth attack on so us, George. In, in Skyfall <laughs> and um and Spectra, he, he wore two different aqua terrors. Yeah. Either one is cool. Sorry, I shouldn't prop it all like that. Either one is cool. Uh, but the thing that is great about the aqua terror is similar to the explorer, the aqua terror is what a spy should be. They should be gray. They should be the gray man who doesn't stand out, or woman who doesn't stand out, can perform to a very, very high level, but does so in secrecy. The aqua terror, unlike a sea master, is very subtle, slides under the cuff. It's a sports watch. It's a dress watch. It's whatever you want it to be. But it's an elite performer. It's an elite performer. The magic is in the movement. And this movement is phenomenal. It has one of the best mass-produced movements on the market, but it is just so relaxed. And he's not going to stand out as a rich guy. He's not going to stand out as a poor guy. He's just solid. I know. I, look, I, I like this. It does remind me of the watch that you keep on going is the Ranchero because I, there's something. <laughs> That's kind of another great. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's a great. But I, um, what I feel a little bit outgunned at the moment with. <laughs> you is, look a little nervous. I, I really am nervous lie. here. I'm a bit outgunned because you basically <sighs> you've brought Omega Omega and Omega. It's like it's like it's three Omegas. I'm like, yeah. how do you compete with three Omegas? No. OK, look, I am going to bring something that is is now coming back to life. And that is the Tag Heuer Night Diver. Yeah. <laughs> so this for me is a watch that um, if you watch the movie, um, and if you watch it, you can only see it for about, a, I don't know, 10 seconds. Mm. And I, I paused it four times when my son and I were watching it. And I said, that's a tag Heuer. Yeah. And my son just went, oh. And I, 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 I literally, I kept on pulling it off. It's the illumination dial. I think this for me is very James Bond. This, it's the bat black coating, that illuminous dial, the whole can, design can of it. talk about how cool that black coating was it's, at that yeah. time? Yeah, and it was a painted coating that yeah. was was kind of one of those things. This watch for me is, it was the introducing of James Bond for the first time back in Timothy Dalton as James Bond. It was like, hey, we're doing exercises and what one dies and then the other one dies and the script's dreadful but the thing <laughs> is this for me was him coming back and, and this was James Bond coming back and he wore this watch and it felt very 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 true to James Bond yeah so that for me is why I brought this is I brought two watches that really and brands that only featured once for very short periods of time well adrian and i thank you very much because this would have otherwise been a very boring podcast <laughs> <laughs> yeah. i've got a mega i've got a mega i've got a mega i've got a mega <laughs> so okay look let's let's run through it okay for me when i'm looking at it we we already know now or i feel like omega is become the kind of the de facto James Bond, you know, you guys all, you've brought an Omega each mm -hmm. or two for yeah. Adrian, because Adrian's just not talking about anything else. He's wanting <laughs> Omega. He's got a love affair with Omega. But what I'm, what I'm kind of cutting out for me is I think, Andrew, but this is my personal thing. Mm -hmm. I don't like your Omega that you brought. I, I, I just think, I think you dropped the mic with Jean-Claude Beaver. Mm -hmm. I think the whole story of Omega with that, but I think, I, I think the story behind it is bloody good, but I just don't think that side of it. Then I, I'm coming over to you and I loved the um, Seamaster. I think it was a beautiful watch. It was one of those watches I wanted to buy myself. I mm -hmm. think it is, I think with the NATO straps, it was, it was, it was Omega doing something special. Those those two, so if I'm voting, I'm going Seiko for you, okay. and I'm going Omega, but first one, I'm going Seamaster. That for me is, those two are the kind of like the sings of those sides. I don't know, what what, what would you do from from our, us two, Andrew? To me, like Adrian's just, it's been a Mike Tyson fight. It's been brutal. The, the yeah. victory was brutal, but it was boring to watch and it was over very quickly. <laughs> so it's just like, you know, let's just drop the most obviously attractive and most recent Seamaster on the table. I, I wanted that too. I still want it. The, the, the ox blood, the sand, the... The tech, the, that matte textured dial, the, everything about it. Even the just packaging beautiful. was bloody good. Yeah. Watch single handedly brought beige back, beige and sand and desert back. Yeah. That was the one. Since mm -hmm. then, we've seen a plethora of watches in the same color scheme, exactly, because it was a killer, yeah. but it was brutal and boring. 
So yep. I'm giving that wasn't my favorite. I thought the Aquaterra. I thought your story around the Aquaterra was sick. <laughs> That's true about spies, and it's true about that watch. When I see someone with an Aquaterra, I know they know watches because it's not trying to be seen. Yeah, the movement which is visible, is extraordinary at that price point. So that was my winner for you. Out of your two, what are you scratching down there? No, no, come on, go on. Okay, yeah. there's some secret notes going on here. <laughs> um, out of your two, definitely don't don't vibe with the Breitling Top Time. So Breitling Top Time, a no. Okay. It's, a, it's a no from me. And what was your second choice? Oh, Jesus Christ. No, I know it because that was the winner. Am I that boring? Am I that boring? <laughs> Sorry. I'm just, you know, come on. It's on you. the screen. Yeah. I love the Night Diver. Yeah. And the fact that that is Loom Dials are back. You've got yes. the, the incredibly, uh, the incredible Bulgari Finissimo Revolution model in full yeah. Loom Dial. You've done a full Loom Dial Snoopy. Yeah. The Night Diver itself is back. That is a killer watch. That is a sensational I, choice. I tell you, when I saw the Night Diver, the new one on, I, I was on a, a tag where event and I saw it on Frederick's wrist. I yeah. literally, and it, I'm you not just beelined it. No, I just, I took it off his wrist. I said, <laughs> I literally grabbed his wrist. I didn't even say hi, Frederick. It was just like, I want to see that watch. So mm. it was, it, it is. I'm so pleased it's back. Okay. Adrian. So I'd, I would say, um, something in my gut says it's between the Seiko mm -hmm. and this Hoya. I don't know what it is about this, but I get the feeling that if we're talking about Bond in real life, to have a military issued watch mm. that has a massive functional that has a massive advantage. functional thing, I kind of feel like this would be it mm. out of all of the ones that we've spoken about. But then there's also something cool about the if we we're to go even more grey, even more standard, a Seiko and a Digi Seiko. <laughs> that's kind of it for its time, though. We must remember this sure. was the height, but of also the, the functionality technology. does everything you need to plus. And the, you, could, the you little... could talk to base. Okay, yeah, sorry. Exactly, you, yeah. You've got to make an opinion. Which, which, which one? This. I'm going to go for this. The, night time. The higher, night time. Night, night so, time. George wins. Okay, so do I win? Because you've just said Omega right at the beginning. You said Adrian. You've just dropped the mic on everyone. Night time, uh, night diver, that I keep on saying night time. Right, yeah. I don't know why I'm saying that. Is, is for me, it is the winner because it is one of those that is the unsung hero of the James Bond watches. Yeah, um, true. And I think... I, I'm saying it's the winner because it's my effing show. So just <laughs> so host. you know, I'm the host. This is this is you know, Andrew. When it's your show, it you, yeah, can, exactly. you can drop can the mic win. on that, okay? Sure. Um, but Tag Heuer, I think you've you've knocked this out of the bar, uh, the box. The illumination dial, the uh, all black case. I think it is absolutely amazing. Now, this part of the um, podcast is about. This is BYOI. Bring your own independence. I just love saying that. BYOI. BYOI. Yeah. Bring your own independence. This is where we introduce an independent brand. Uh, not necessarily introduce, but highlight an independent yeah. brand, independent watchmaker anywhere in the world, um, and just give them a bit of a, a spotlight. A bit of love. What so have you got, it's, George? It's my show. So I'm going to bring Autodromo. Um, I think um, Bradley is is an amazing person. I've got a, a little clip. I've got 30 seconds of him explaining. What did you say to him? So I WhatsApped him just before we came here and I said, hey, look, I need 30 seconds of you telling me the elevator pitch about your brand. And I just That's thought, what it should be. That's and and yeah. I just went 30 seconds elevator pitch. You're going into the Shark Tank. Tell us about the brand. So anyway, here is here's 30 seconds. The Autodromo brand is really created as a way to express my passion for vintage cars through design. And the whole idea is to take inspiration from elements of the past and sort of distill them to their most essential and create wearable objects and other uh, accessories that express the time period or the, the vibe that these things create. Firstly, he's got a freaking cool accent. I was just going to yeah. say, he sounds awesome. He is, he is <laughs> awesome. Just keep talking. Yeah. I, I, he is, why I, do you love it, George? Why did you pick out of anyone? You BYOI'd Autodrama. Do you know why I brought it? Because I, firstly, I like him and I think that his design is great. I, I love the integrated bracelets, um, 67, sorry, 70s, 80s design. Um, I also love the connection to cars. Um, and 
every time I've chatted to him, it really has been that connection of design and cars. And what he did with Ford GT was bloody amazing. When the Ford GT came back, he just did this real knockout dials, hands, combination colors. Ford went to him and said, you understand cars and watches. Can you create something for us? And it really does feel like he has, has created this brand around kind of 80s, 70s, 80s, and a little bit touch 90s. He's almost done, and you know, you you talked about the Nautilus earlier. He's he's done the idea of an integrated bracelet into a case, and I think it's it's it's. It, I I'm saying genius. I I really respect what he does. So, it's about f-ing time that we stop. I'm so, uh, sorry to say this. I, can I just say I'm a little I'm a little exhausted. Like I, we talked about it I, being I, a battle. I, I, I feel, I feel like we have battled. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so so Tag Heuer has won, and yes, I win! <laughs> it's my show! This is, no, it's, it's, I win! It's a stitch-up. This is, it's a total, total stitch-up. Stitch Whoever up. sits the in the hot seat. It, it's, and by uh, the way, it was Hoyer. Let's just yeah. be, let's be, let's be technically correct. Okay, Hoyer. Oh, Hoyer, but now it's Tag Hoyer, so come on. Um, but Brilliant. I'm George Bamford from Bamford Watch Department. I'm Adrian from Bark and Jack. I'm Andrew from Time and Tide. Um, do check out our Instagram, <laughs> which is at about dot effing dot time. God, that's a mouthful. It is. Um, anyway, thank you very much, and we're out. Yeah.